We are joined by a special guest, having a lot of trouble with her headphones, <laughs> Lindsay Barra. Joins us here at her grandpa's museum. How you doing, Lindsay? I'm good. You're loud enough without the microphone in my ear. Right next <laughs> Are we to me? starting the roast soon or what? <laughs> A little early? Right now. All right. So we wanted to congratulate you because I know you were really the, the big push behind getting this, the names on the petition. So what's the thought of the family that, that your grandfather is going to be honored posthumously? The posthumously part does make me a little sad. I would be lying if I said it didn't. But at the same time. It's such a neat thing, and I'm really happy that it ended up happening, mm. and so proud that he's going to get this honor, which is the the basically the you know highest honor our country can give you. Right. That's not a military honor, and it's going to be really neat to have the medal here in the museum as just a symbol of his exemplary life for all the kids who come through here to see. So I'm I'm just pretty proud. I'm proud of him. How do you think he would have felt about it? He would have just probably been like, that's cool, thank you. <laughs> you know, just, yeah. <laughs> he, he obviously, you know, nothing Grandpa ever did, he didn't do them for the, his, mm. never did it for the accolades. It was just who he was. Mm. Um, he obviously would have thought it was pretty neat to go to the White House and, and, and get that medal. My grandparents had been to every White House since the Kennedy administration, I think, and I don't think that they mm. were at Obama's, so he, put, he would have thought that was cool. Now, he knew he was, he was still around when you oh, yeah. started this push. Yes. What did right. he think about this? I remember trying to explain to him the online part of it, and he was so <laughs> confused. He was like, where do I sign? On the computer. How do you sign the computer? It was very funny. Um, so he, he actually signed for himself? No, no, oh, no, no. no. <laughs> um, he, you know, he, he knew we were doing it. He knew that I was going out and, and stopping for it and, and bugging people like you and and, and uh, going on TV and going on the radio. And, and he, you know, I would tell him, we've got 40,000, we got 70,000. Okay, we finally got it, you know, whatever. And, and he, he knew that. But And then towards the end, I think that he, you know, we said... You know, you're going to get it. You're going to get it. But but that was it. Now, you know that, you know, Don a little bit. Don would really make unicorns and rainbows look bad. So he's found something in this that really does annoy him. And I kind of agree with him in okay. all seriousness. No, just because we really, I remember you let us know about it. We made the push to our listeners and our viewers to try to make sure that this got through. Mm -hmm. And he he fought in D-Day. He's one. Of, he's an icon. Everybody knows who Yogi Berra is and had to fight so hard to get this honor. And then when I saw the list, and you see Barbara Streisand, James Taylor, uh, the Estefans, uh, and, and not to take anything away from those people, but I'm like, we fought hard to get Yogi Berra, and this is the list. Now, maybe people fought just as hard for Barbara Streisand, but for somebody who fought in D-Day, I would think it would be a little easier for that person to be able to get in there than everybody else. I would think so, too, but I, I would I will say what, what they would probably say is that it is a civilian honor, and right. your military service doesn't technically have anything to do with it. I I do know that those people didn't do the petition the way that we did, so I don't okay. really know the red tape behind it, but I just sort of feel like the way I'm looking at it is we got those 110,000 signatures. Good for us. We're way cooler than you guys. So <laughs> right. it. it does seem it all it does seem surprising. You know, it's it's it is still nice that it's happening now. Obviously, yeah. and you know we've been sort of yeah like why did it take so long and why? But really, it's it's surprising that it didn't happen with the previous administration. No, in the 80s and you know when he um, I learned a lot about your grandfather in his passing. You know, I'd always known. The basics, but in some of the features that I saw in the news, really got to appreciate and be reminded of how major his impact was yeah. to pop culture again in the 70s and 80s. And I'm almost surprised it wouldn't have, have happened then. I think so, too. And I, I didn't even know anything about this, to be honest, um, until my Uncle Dale brought it up when Stan Musial got it. I think it was in 2009. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how you get on a particular president's radar to get the award. But when he hadn't by that time, we were like, all right, maybe we should maybe we should try to do this. But I, I definitely think that he's if you when we were filling out the petition, you had to click just three categories of things that he had done that were good for the community of um, you know, civil rights, education, these things. And I could have clicked like 50 boxes. So. So I was like, well, which ones do we pick? Which ones are going to get him this thing? But he really was qualified in all of the areas. So he def definitely could have gotten it. All earlier. right. So how much of the family goes to the White House? It's this Tuesday, right? So, uh, yeah, a, a week from today. Um, it's actually my, my dad and my uncles were invited with plus ones. Mm -hmm. So Uncle Tim and, and Uncle Dale are bringing their wives. And my dad's the only one who's not married. So I get to be my dad's plus one. <laughs> there you go. So nice. just the six of us are going. So does that mean uh, th th that involves a full, you know, President conversation handshake, is that correct? 
I think all 17 people are getting them at once, so it's probably going to be a fleeting handshake. Like a fleeting handshake. Yeah. But still, that's a presidential <laughs> handshake. It's going to be like a, a, a salute from across the room. I maybe. will tell you this, uh, that you know, the Yan- when the Yankees win a World Series, they go to the White House. So um, I've had the opportunity to tag along. I've met Clinton, mm-hmm. and I met Bush. And they also they went there in 2009 with Barack Obama, and he was probably the least interactive of all of them. Really? Didn't shake hands. And you were behind. Didn't take pictures with you. You know, Bush brought everybody into the Oval Office. George yeah. Steinbrenner was standing behind the desk and, like, interrupting George Bush. And he said, only you would think you can interrupt the President of the United States. <laughs> and Clinton was great. And, he, you know, he, he took a picture with everybody, shook everybody's hand. But Barack Obama was very... Maybe not a, maybe not a Yankees guy. Yeah, I just think that, it, it, the, that his White House has run a little bit different. It's just very regimented, time frame. Uh, we got five minutes for this, and there just wasn't time to take pictures with everybody. Well, I was at the Bush uh, White House with the Anaheim Ducks and with the Devils when they were there. And was the he, Stanley Cup. Super he shook friendly, everybody's right? hands. Yeah. And I, I mean, because he was a big sports him, fan yeah. too. But so is so is Barack Obama. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't want to say anything political, but it's possible President Obama's doing other. Th- you know, he might be more focused on tasks. President Bush may have been waiting around for athletes to show up. Let's be honest. I mean, he, he, really? had, a, he had a Nolan. But you don't Ryan, want to be political. He, yeah, he well, wasn't focused on any tasks. He, he had a Nolan Ryan poster hanging in the Oval Office. I mean, it's a different kind of presidency. Do you understand what I'm saying? No, I think you're being rude about uh, the leader of the free world. <laughs> I'm we sure don't rip Democrats or Republicans. I'm sure. On Show. Oh, no, you not, rip everyone. Yes, yeah, right. We're, we're equal opportunity rippers, <laughs> but, not, but we don't but, specifically say okay, liberal, <laughs> conservative. I, I'm pretty. Like I think, Michael Jordan said, they all buy sneakers. Well, <laughs> talk about the talk about a bad guy. <laughs> Michael Jordan's a bad guy too. Oh, the the worst. He the played worst. for your Washington uh, Wizards. <laughs> Wizards. Yeah. He, he's also a Tar Heel. I'm a Tar Heel. Oh, sorry. Oh, great you guy. went to North Carolina. I did. Go Heels. Now, I, I've been on the campus of North Carolina, and I think it's one of the most beautiful oh, places in the world. It's amazing. It's great. So you enjoyed your time. I loved it. Every second. Every you had another chance Carolina. to go somewhere else, you'd go there again. I always said that if I ever had any reason to go to grad school, I would go back to the same place I went to undergrad for grad school, which only totally dorky people do, but I would have done that. I loved it there. It was great. Well, go to grad school. You have well, could if you want. Grad school. Very I'm, well. I'm getting a little old for this. Now, you're, you're, <laughs> you've been to roasts here before, obviously, right? So what I is my... actually don't think we've ever had a roast This is the first before. one, Don. No, I was told there was a I roast. don't think there's We've been a roast. We've had other events. Uh, events, panel discussions, no. you know, all kinds of things. Well, because I just wanted to know how close to blue I could work. You can do whatever you want. Well, that's what I you was told. And I was given examples of other, they said roasts, maybe it was just other events of stories that were told that were towards the bluer side. So. I don't believe there's ever been a roast. There, there's been panels. As so well, you're the first said. person. Yeah. Right. First roast. I, there's not going to be any children present, so, you know, feel free. All right, well, well how do you, I think you have to look at it like this. This this museum is in honor of your grandfather. Mm-hmm. I think it's safe to say that Yogi Berra's sense of humor would be pretty free flowing in a situation like this. Who had a better sense of humor, Yogi or Carmen? Oh, very different senses of humor. In, but, in but what sense? Both very funny. My grandmother was whip smart. I mean, not that Grandpa wasn't whip smart, but my grandmother was like New York Times crossword puzzle in five minutes kind of smart. So they just had different senses of humor, but both very funny. And Grandpa, by the way, was a ball buster until the very last second, so he would not let you off the hook at oh, all. Good. So, this is you know. all good news. <laughs> this is all good news. Wait, we used to watch your pregame show like all summer, and he'd be like, this guy never stops talking. <laughs> well, see. <laughs> And I was just blown away when Michael said that he watched this show, and uh, and when he said it on the air and, and made that. Yeah, line, you would text was, me and say, "Grandpa, I was just, just you would never shut up." Exactly. Yeah. I mean, but just, and he would say it all the time. This guy's talking again, he's talking again. How he, come he doesn't let that guy talk? Well, he, like, you know, oh, that's what I said. He oh, loved, I had an he advocate in Yogi. I right. know he did. <laughs> he, of course, he did. Oh, also, I just got word from uh, Mark Feinstein of the New York Daily News that Yogi also won the Baseball Writers New York Payson Award today for community service. Yes, I actually just, Dave just told me about that um, so a few great. moments ago. A He's nice also going to be honored by the St. Louis Baseball Writers Association um, for lifetime service as well in January. Very cool. Well, congratulations to you because I know you were the big impetus behind it and to the family as well. And I do also wish that Yogi was here to enjoy it. Yeah. I know. And thank you guys so much for helping me at the end there. Couldn't have done it without all the extra shout outs to get people oh, it was on the internet. He was way, it was way over 100,000, right? We ended up with 110 and change, so yeah. Right. I wonder how many Gloria Estefan got. Hey. None. <laughs> Lots. No, she didn't. I was talking to, was talking to Dale, and he said that a lot of the people didn't have petitions. Most of the people didn't. Yeah, have I don't petitions. get why Yogi had to have a petition. To me, it's a slam. And you talk dunk. about other presidents. I mean, you just talked about W. Bush, who was a huge baseball fan. You would think that would be a no-brainer for him, right? You would think. I, I think a lot of baseball players got it 
on his watch, okay. though, wasn't. But Yogi, it's kind of interesting. Him of all people. I mean, with the exception of right, there's some obvious ones, right? There's uh, Jackie Robinson and Hank Aaron, these mm -hmm. people who sort of transcend baseball utterly and completely. But then Yogi did the same thing and became such a pop culture icon. I mean, this is a guy who has been quoted by every one of these presidents. Yeah, right. They all Absolutely. stole from Yogi. No one wanted to give him an honor. <laughs> it's funny the Jackie Robinson thing. I, and one of the, one of the things that we kept pushing when we were trying to get people to sign this petition. Grandpa was a white ball player who, in 1947, mm -hmm. 48, he was the most colorblind human being in the world, right? So he really embraced Jackie and Elson Howard, Minnie Minoso, all these guys on the right side of the color line when it was the wrong place to be. And I really believe that pushing that movement in sports pushed it in the country. And I don't think that's something he gets credit for. People think, oh, yeah, nickel ain't worth a dime anymore. Come to a fork in the road, take it. And that's what they think of my grandfather for. And, and as that pop culture icon, but I think his impact was so much bigger than that. Yeah, that's, I mean, being in that position during that time mm -hmm. was uh, was probably, you know, yeah. somewhat scary and risky in, in the moment. But he, and he didn't even think about that, though. He didn't see color. He saw Jackie barreling down the line, and he was the fastest player on the other side, and he had to watch out for him. That was all he saw. That's Lindsay Barrow. We thank her for dropping by and congratulate the whole Barrow family on this, uh, the highest honor that a civilian in this country can have. So thanks for dropping by. Thank you. We appreciate it. We'll be back with more as we lead into a roast that I am dreading. 1 800 909 3776. It's Kay LaGreca oh, yeah. Rosenberg, Lindsay Barrow, and you right here on Yes and 987 ESPN.